I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <coughs> <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. In the prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Today is our, our topic is about the angels of Aka Muhammad, Aka Allah. And uh, what is the role of those angels in this religion, if we can call it a religion? Uh, one of you, he sent me a, a question saying, uh, there is any other place where the angels, they commit sin, etc. And then he said to me, when I answered him, I said, well, isn't it the verse is enough where Allah in chapter 2, verse number 30, 31, 32, etc. Uh, Allah questioning the angel if they are saying the truth. Then he answered me back, says, well, you know what the Muslim will say? Uh, you know, they will say it is a, a rational question. It's not a real question. If we go to the verse our friend here is talking about, chapter 2, verse number 30, it's a rational question, not a real question. So there is a real question, there is a rational question. Uh, okay. I wish that would work when you go and take an exam. So here you notice actually the story in front of you. The story is very silly and very stupid. When your Lord said, this is the Muslim translation, remember, I don't agree with it. To the angels, I am placing a successor in the earth. And this is the first mistake, because how he success, be successor if there is no previous generation. Khalifa, the word in Arabic, Khalifa, is the same as the word Caliphate. You know, like al-Baghdadi, he's a Caliphate. So he's a Caliphate to who? He's a Caliphate to Muhammad. And both, they look the same. Both, they rape, etc. So how you use the word successor, if there is nobody to sec, you know, to to take over from being before, so there was Adam before Adam, and then he continues saying, they said, who is they? They the angels. Will you place in it someone who will cause corruption in it, and shed blood, while we declare your praises and uh, uh, like you know we praise you, we pray for you, etc. And this is what the question the guy is saying. Well, this is a rational question. Rational. First of all, if those angels are just a bunch of slaves, remember Islam is religion of slavery. Everybody is slave. And those slaves, they always obey Allah. Is it from the form of obedience to question the boss? And especially this boss is God. Are you? So, if we say this is not even a question, that is a question for the, the, the you know, if the decision is right. Because they are comparing right away themselves to the one he will create. So, are you going to do this? And we are the one who do this? So, this is a question 
of how wise Allah is with his decision. And anyone he would say, I cannot see that, he is just playing games and he is a liar. They are not asking him even why. He's asking him how you will do such a thing when we are the one who praise thee and they are the one who will curse thee. They are the one who will disobey thee. So they are questioning the logic. They are questioning the wisdom. They are questioning the decision. And then the story does not finish here. Allah, he said to them, I know what you know not. So this is the second step after the question. I know what you know not, but is that change, like stopped here? No. Allah now, he wanted to prove how he know what they know not. And you see here how silly, you know, Muhammad, he learned in the Old Testament that God, he taught Adam, the angels, the names, but this is not about such a story. This is about, you know, give him wisdom, give him knowledge to live, survive. This is not about, uh, you know, uh, which means that the, the Bible says that God, he made Adam, the human, different from animals. They see object, they name object, regardless if it's food or not. It's not just an image in his head. He memorized the image, he memorized it with a name. The same as a computer, like, you know, you search in your computer, you search for a word to find something. But that thing is not necessarily a word. It might be an image. So if I go right now to Google, I search for the word chair. Google will search for me for the word chair, but the fact the word chair is attached to image, which is a chair. So when Allah, he taught Adam all the names in the Bible, he taught him knowledge. It's not to make a quiz test against the knowledge of the angels. And then Allah, after he taught Adam all the names, he presented them to the angels. The, what? He presented what? The names, which is very silly. Those things, you know. And he told them, tell me the names of these if you are sincere. This is the Muslim translation, sincere. In Arabic, actually, it says sadiqun, sadiqin, which means uh, truthful. If you change the translator, this is uh, itani. See, if you are a truthful, Sadiq is the opposite of a liar. As simple as, as that. Sadiq is a, is a truthful, is saying the truth. A liar is a liar, somebody is saying a lie. So if you are a truthful, tell me the names of those things. So how the angels will be creatures of a truth. If if they were able to answer about the names. When he said to them, if you are truthful, tell me the names of those things. So you can switch to sentence here in the beginning, or you can leave it at the end. Tell me the names of those things if you are truthful. So if they can't tell the names, that means they are truthful about Adam, he would do mischievement. But all of us, we knew that Adam and his children, us, we did mischievement. So the angels, they were right, and Allah is being stupid. Secondly, how in the world you prove that you are the one is knowledgeable? By teaching somebody names, and then you're asking somebody else to tell the names. What about you do the opposite? What about Allah? He said to them, teach Adam some names, and don't tell me about them, and then I will tell you the names. And that will prove that he is the person who knows the unseen. He have knowledge and nobody can hide from him anything. But what he did is just a silly, it's not even a teenage trick. Imagine I say to you, you want to do this, and then you say, okay, I'm going to give a, I have a dog, I will give him a name. Tell me the name of my dog. And because you could not give the name of the dog, 
That's mean you are not smart and you are not a truthful. But regardless of how stupid this story is, the verse say clearly, if you are a truthful, and if we say, uh, if we take the word Sadiqeen, the same word, and we search it in the Quran, I'll copy it in the front of you, I just did. I will put it in the search engine in the front of you. Here we go. And let us see what this word brings to us. Chapter 2, verse number 23. Allah is saying to the kuffar, who have a doubt about what we revealed, bring a chapter of this and call your witnesses if you are a truthful. So, isn't it clear that Allah accusing those to be liars? This is what the word Sadiqeen mean. If you are Sadiqeen, if you are in Kuntum Sadiqeen. The same we can go to different verses. This is just one. This is the same verse we read, chapter 2, verse number 31. We will skip it because already we read it. Let us go. Uh, chapter 2, verse number 94. If you are a truthful, and this is the translation of, uh, let us change the translator. This guy, he keeps saying sincere. Anyway, sincere will not uh, hurt, but it's stupid to say sincere, because sincere is different from truthful. So, here, you know, those people, uh, Allah again is arguing with them, supposedly, in a very silly way, as usual. So he said to them, well, wish for death if you are truthful. What the heck is that? I mean, wish for death if you are truthful. So now, the, okay, what if they wish for death? They are truthful now? <laughs> they say that we are going to have the heaven for us. He said, well, okay, wish for death if you are truthful. <laughs> well, death is coming anyway. So, if you go in the Quran all over, you see that the word in Kuntum Sadiqeen, actually, if, if we search, we can search just to show you how the Quran is a silly book. Keep repeating the same word, the same word, the same word, the same sentence, not even the same word. I will copy the whole sentence just to show you how stupid this book is. Endless. In Kuntum Sadiqeen, chapter 2, verse 20, 23, chapter 2, verse number 31. Chapter 2, verse number 94. Chapter 2, verse number 11. Chapter uh, uh, 3, verse number 93. And all of, all of that, it says clearly, that those who the word is used with them, they are liars. The Christian, the Jews, they said, that nobody enter heaven except the Christian and Jews. Quran says, this is, these are their wishes. Say, produce your proof if you are truthful. So was the Christian saying a rational thing and Allah is giving a rational question or this is a real challenge? If you are truthful, well, well, is Allah saying they are not liar then? So when a Muslim, he tried to escape the stupidity in his book, Use his logic and the logic he have in the Quran. We can read every interpretation for this if you are truthful in every verse in the Quran. And you will see all of it come with the one reasoning or one answer. They are not truthful according to the Quran. And in this case here, the Christians, which us, we are not truthful according to the Quran when we say only Christian and Jews go to heaven. For sure, yeah, because, you know, even the Jews, if they don't believe in Jesus, they would not go to heaven. Unless there are people who came before the coming of the Messiah. They are waiting for the Messiah. Those are different story. So, when the Jews and the Christians say nobody can go to heaven except those who believe in the true God, which is not Allah, Muhammad is making a challenge saying, bring your proof if you are truthful. And here we laugh. How come Muhammad don't produce a proof? If you go in the Quran, you will find that Muhammad Let 
us go here. Uh, you know, when, when Muhammad, he challenged people, or Allah challenged people for proof. Allah himself, he asked for proof. What does that mean? You don't accept any messenger of Allah unless he produce a miracle, certain miracle. What is that? Chapter 3, verse number 183. The Jews who said, by the way, it doesn't say in the verse the Jews, but the, the Jews, it is the Jews, yeah. Those who said, Verily Allah has taken our promise not to believe in any messenger unless he bring us an offering which the fire from the heaven shall devour. Say, Verily there come to you messenger before me which is a clear sign and even with them what you speak of. Why you did kill them if you are truthful? Do you see it? So look what happened now. We have a God, he told the Jews not to accept any prophet to be a prophet unless he make an offering. You see the, the verse here doesn't say, oh, I, Allah did not say that, Allah did not request that. No, 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 he confirmed actually. And the proof he confirmed it, he says, well, the same as you asked for, the same, you know, you, his messenger came before Muhammad, and they did be the same as exact you asked for. In the beginning here it says, Verily Allah has taken our promise not to believe. So Muhammad did not deny that, and even the books of Tafsir did not deny that. So Allah, he make a promise, and this is what we will see actually from the time of Adam. From the time of Adam, his children, both the children, according to the Muslim story, which is a very funny story, that Adam, he used to have, each time his wife Eve, she gave birth, she gave birth to a twin. One is male and one is female, which means the twin is not male and um, two male, is one male, one female. Why? Because haram, brother, haram to marry your sister from the same twin. Very funny, very silly religion. So they create up stories. So then when, uh, uh, when uh, Eve, she gave birth to a twin, and then one of the twin girls, which means two twins now, like one male, one female, one male, one female. Uh, the two twins, they were fighting over the pretty girl they want to marry or, you know, sleep with, and there's no marriage at that time, with the pretty girl, because one of the twin she have a cross eyes. Uh, don't ask me, this is the Muslim story. So Allah, he told them, he told Adam, let one of them provide an offering, a sacrifice. And the one I accept from him is the one who can take the pretty girl. So you will notice that approval, the way of this approval, is exists since Adam. So why Muhammad don't want to do it? So when we see the other verse saying that Allah he made he required from us not to accept any messenger unless he or make an offering. And this is in chapter 3, verse number 183. So you make an offering, then a fire will come from the sky, will consume the offering, and the offering always have to be a lamb. And here you ask yourself why? The same as what happened to Abraham. You see how the offering continue? It's a, it's a not, a not, a not a, you know, it's not one person. So, uh, you make an offering, if the fire came from the sky, and take that offering from this person, that is a sign that the God is approving this person, he is truthful. Do you see it? So look what happened here. When the Jews, they said, Allah, he taken a promise from us not to believe in any messenger unless he bring us an offering. 
Muhammad, he did not deny that. He said to them, well, there's many messengers before me. They come and they did exactly what you said. Would mean they give Al-Farin and God, he sent uh, fire to consume uh, the, the, the offering. And yet you killed those prophets. And they know if it was the Muslims, who are they, the prophet? They killed them. They failed. The Muslim, all the Muslim religion, they failed to tell us the name of one prophet the Jews killed. Just one. They will not be able to find one. And this is how silly, stupid the Quran is. So why you kill them? Why then you kill them? There's many, not one, many. And then it says here, if you are truthful. So the same sentence in Kuntum Sadiqeen is attached to those who killed Prophet. So the accusation in Kuntum Sadiqeen, if you are truthful, it's not about like, you know, just uh, we are playing fun and we are being friendly. This is very serious in Kuntum Sadiqeen. mean, if you are truthful and obviously you are criminals. So how come when we say the angels, Allah, he said to them, you are, if you are truthful, suddenly the Muslim, they, they skip it and they say, oh, he is not accusing them of lying. Well, what is the opposite if you are truthful? What is the opposite? If you are truthful, do Allah knew that they are truthful or not? If the Muslim they say he do not know, that's mean Allah is not God. If they say he knew, and yet he made the challenge, that means they are not. Because it's going to be stupid of him to challenge how truthful they are if he knew that they are truthful. You know what I mean? Let us say you have a son, he did something, but you are not sure. So you say to him, well, give me, uh, give me, bring me a witness that you are not the one who broke this thing, if you are truthful. Well, if you are a God, you do not need witnesses and you do not need to make such a challenge to prove that he is truthful because you know he is truthful or not. So here, actually, when the Muslims they say this was a rational question, that is a stupid because now they are destroying the nature of their God. That's mean their God, when he says, if you are truthful, he was not a truthful himself. Because if they are truthful, and you say to them, if you are truthful, that's when you are lying when you suspect how truthful they are. <laughs> Do we understand? If I know a person, he is very decent. And then I say to him, give me the proof if you are truthful. That's mean myself, I'm not decent. With my challenge, because I know already that he is truthful. Anybody don't understand what I'm saying? If I know that you are not the criminal who did this crime, and then I say to you, give me the proof if you are truthful. That's mean I am a deceiving person playing games. I'm not being truthful myself because I know the truth already. So if Allah is God, how in the world even he asked this, such a question? If you are truthful. And if he knew that they are truthful and he is asking the question, that making himself and a truthful person, he is just a liar. Because there is, there is no challenge in the challenge. And then you will see that when he said, if you are truthful, he, he connect that to a condition. What is the condition? Tell me the names of those things. Tell me the names of those things if you are truthful. So if they fail to tell the names, if they fail to tell the names, then those angels, uh, they are not truthful. Very simple. They fail. They suffer from bad failure. They say to Allah, how we can know what you did not tell us? And here we see how stupid this drama is. Because if Allah, he knew what he told them, 
then how the angels they knew that Adam would do mischievement? If this is not what Allah told them. If you ask a Muslim, do Allah lie? They will say no. Do the angels lie? They say no. Okay, let us read together then. <laughs> when the angels, they say to Allah, are you going to place therein somebody who will do mischievement? Isn't it this is a sin? If it's not true? Isn't it a sin to make a gossip or a lie about somebody else? You see, Muslims, they are just, they are the last one to understand their book because they recite, they sing it. You know, they make the voice come from the stomach and the nose and the, and the, and the voice is spin in the nose, but the, but the voice never spin in the, in the head. It's just in the stomach and in the nose. What the heck is that? We focus in squeezing our body, but we don't focus in squeezing our brain. That's why Muslim brain is priceless, because it's never been used. Brand new. So will you place therein those who will make mischief therein? If this is a true accusation, then the, the angels did not commit sin, because that's what he do. If it is not true, that means, obviously, the angels, they commit a big sin. According to the Quran, the angels are not saying truthful thing, as you see, because the Quran says to them, if you are truthful, If you are truthful about what? About this sentence. So did the angels now made a lie? So what does this have to do with rational question and not rational? This is a lie. Either it's a lie or it's true. Did they say the truth? If they say the truth, that means they are the truthful and Allah is the one who is not truthful. Choose one. The second you say the angels they were truthful, that means Allah Himself is not truthful. Because He said to them about their accusation to Adam, he, His answer was, if you are truthful. Truthful about what? About will you place therein those who will make mischievement therein and shed the blood? And here you ask yourself, if the angels know not anything except what Allah told them, where this is coming from? Why the angels are saying something Allah did not teach them? And how they knew? How an angel of God, he knew the future? Do they knew the future? If they knew the future, which Allah do not know, because as you see, Allah said to them, I know what you know not. Do you see how stupid, complicated the story become? It's a story of stupidity. So, if the angels do not know the future, because Allah said to them, I know what you know not, that means they are wrong. And that means they are making false accusation, and that is a big sin. In Islam, if you accuse a woman of a prostitution or adultery, and you don't have four witnesses, they see the penis going in and out. They have to see it, by the way. Like if you are a husband, you come home. You found a guy in the top of your wife. Still, you have no proof that she is fornicating. She don't. There's no proof. You cannot even divorce her. I mean, you can divorce her in Islam for any reason. But I mean, you cannot divorce her by that reason. If you make that reason, if you say, I'm divorced without reason, she can take you to court, and you, they will beat the hell of you for saying such a statement without bringing four witnesses who can see the penis of the guy going in and out, not only in the top of her, not only naked. They have to see it going in, as Muhammad, he says, the same as a pen going in the inkwell. So they have to see it as a pen in the inkwell. And now here we ask ourselves, what is the pen and where is the inkwell? Will you place therein those who will make mischievement therein and shed blood? 
So this is not a question. This is an accusation. This is an accusation to Adam and his seeds after him. Allah, he told them, I know what you know not. This is not a rational question with rational answer. Allah here is saying to them, I know you know not, which means this knowledge is stupid. This is not a truthful knowledge. This is a false accusation. And by the way, we know that the angels, they were right and Allah is wrong, which will prove again that angels in Islam is better than Allah. And they have knowledge more than Allah. And then when he continues and he says, let us teach them the names. And if you can tell the names, then you are truthful. What the angel says, we cannot tell the names. The angel says, glory to you. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Stop. We have no knowledge except what you taught us. So where you got this from? Will you place therein those who will make mischiefment therein and shed the blood? If this is not the knowledge he taught them, that means they fabricated a lie. Do you see? The Muslims, you know, because this is Islam is not a religion. Islam is just a guy, his name is Muhammad. He heard the, angel, the Jews have angels. Okay, I will have angels. The Jews, the Christian, they have fasting. I will have fasting. That's why he see, he copy. He walk between the Jews. He see them fasting. He says, what this fasting is about? They say, this is the day when Moses, he crossed the sea. He says, oh, okay, we are more close to Moses than you then. And he ordered his followers to fast it. Then he met with the Sabian, and the Sabian, they fast Ramadan. So he canceled Ashura, and he starts fasting the Sabian, fasting, which is Ramadan. He's just establishing a religion. He don't have a religion. Other religion, they have fasting. Okay, let's try, let's try to find a reason for fasting. Other religion, they have a prayer. Okay, we have, we will make a prayer. Other religion, even if you remember, when, just to show you how easy to expose Muhammad, Muhammad, he pray in the top of a funeral, a, a, a corpse of a dead man. A Jewish guy, he walked by. And the Jewish guy, he saw how Muhammad, he pray in the top of the dead guy. What the Jewish guy, he said? He says, this is how we do it. What Muhammad reaction? Sit down, sit down, act differently. Okay, if Muhammad is a prophet of God, he was praying according to which teaching? If you say to me he was praying according to the teaching of Allah, then why he changed it just because the guy, he said, this is how we do it. Who care? If Allah taught you to pray this way, are you going to change it in two seconds? Or Muhammad here, he noticed that there's a copyright violation and he got busted. His PhD is not a PhD. He's, he's collecting things from the internet. So right away, erase it, erase it. Write something different, write something different. Act, act differently, it's me, write something different. It means forget about what you used to do a second ago. But do you pray according to God or according to a Jew? Muhammad was praying in the funeral standing. Who is the one who taught him that? If you say it's Allah, then how Muhammad he changed it? In a second. If you say it's not Allah, that means Muhammad is a fraud. And he changed the prayer as he wished. And you see, here we see that when the Quran says, bring your proof if you are truthful. Here we have the proof, Muhammad is a fraud. The same as the story of the punishment of the grave. Muhammad never mentioned it, a Jewish woman, she came. To Aisha, and she mentioned it. Muhammad went out to the yard. He heard Aisha fighting with a Jewish woman, arguing with her. So he said, uh, what, what, what this noise is about? The Aisha, she said, well, this woman, she is saying there is a punishment in the grave. And look what Muhammad, where he got his punishment for a grave from. The reason Allah will torture you in the grave because of urine. Why? Because a Jewish woman, she said so. A Jewish woman, she said, if you piss and piss touch your feet, 
God will torture you in the grave. This is something they say to the children. So the children will keep themselves clean. This is not true. The stupid Muhammad, he took it serious. So the Jewish, they teach their children when they are kids, some like, uh, you know, uh, fictions, just to keep them clean. Don't, don't piss in your shoes. Don't piss in your feet, you stupid. God will torture you in the grave, okay? Okay, mom. And then the kid, he will, he will learn how to not be careful when he piss. Muhammad, he took it seriously. And now it become part of Islamic religion. And here you will see the proof in front of you. Aisha told the Jews who visit and mention the punishment of the grave. Uh, you know, she told her that you are a liar. And she said to Muhammad, is it true? He said, yeah, it's true. And then after that, Muhammad never stopped praying without mentioning the punishment of the grave. Remember, he never ever mentioned it before. Read carefully, and this is Bukhari. Aisha, she said, the Jews came and, the, she, uh, and mentioned, uh, mentioned she, uh, to her the punishment of the grave, saying to her, may Allah protect you, okay? Uh, from the punishment of the grave, Aisha then asked Allah Messenger. By the way, the story here is different from the real story. But the, the detailed story is about they are fighting. And then you will see right away, Muhammad, he agreed that there is a punishment in the grave. And since then, and after that, read carefully. This is what is the most important. And after that, I never saw Allah Messenger, but seek a refuge from, uh, with Allah from the point of the grave in every prayer. So Muhammad, he spent his life, he never mentioned the punishment of the grave. A Jewish woman, she came to the house, she mentioned it. Bingo. Muhammad, he added something brand new. He learned today from the Jews that there is a punishment of the grave. Let us add it to the religion. <laughs> and the proof in the front of you. And after that, I never heard, I never saw Muhammad praying without saying, I seek refuge from the punishment. So how come before you never seek refuge from the point of the grave? Because he just learned it from the Jews. He never. So going back to our topic, everything here is a fraud. If you are a truthful, if you are a truthful, if you are truthful, all over the Quran, and you will see that Muhammad himself is a truthful, because if you are a truthful, can you give us a proof that this is coming from God? If you are a truthful, why God is being stupid here? Like as an example, God, he sent two angels, their name is Harut and Marut. And what is their business is to teach magic. If there is any proof that there is two angels in the Babylon, they came down and opened Harry Potter school. What is the proof of that? And why Allah want to teach magic to cause divorce? And you know the funny here, Allah He sent angels who will teach you black magic, but they make disclaimer. Listen carefully. We are here just a trial. So why you open a school of a trial? So I open a school of drugs and I sell drugs. And then I say to you before you buy a disclaimer, I mean, who is the stupid here? It's like those who make a, 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 you know, cigarettes. They put in the top of their box says, this cigarette causes you cancer. But this does not change anything. You are killing people. What kind of disclaimer disclaimer is? So Harut and Marut is two angels were sent down to this earth. And according to Muslims, they commit sin. And this is other part of the story here. The Muslims, they say, no, they did not commit sin. Let us go to your Muslim website. And you will say to you that the hadith about Harut and Marut, they had sex with the women. Her name is Venus, is a lie. Those are not Sahih hadith. Those are not Sahih Hadith. Are you sure? It's not Sahih. 
This is islamweb.net. And this is the question number. Actually, this is the book, not the question here. Ad-Durru al-Manthur, al-Imam Jalalu al-Din wa Abdul Rahman ibn Abdi Bakr al-Suyuti. Value number one, page number 508. Allah has a statement, Harutu wa Marut. And here he is giving you all the reference, and you will see how they lie when they say that those stories are not sahih. It says it clearly that those are sahih. So in YouTube, those hadith are not sahih. In their books, it is sahih. Because it's an embarrassment. وأخرج الحاكم وصححه عن طريق سعيد بن جبير. It is a sahih. What is sahih? That Allah he sent two angels. From his angels, Harut and Marut. They ask Allah to, to go down to the earth. So he sent them down. And they used to be like judging between the people. And when night come, they say few words like shashu, kakaku, shashasha, like password, you know, magic. And they go to the sky. And then Allah, he sent them a woman. She is so good looking. And he made them horny. And they start asking her to do boom boom. And they keep asking her to take off her panty. And then she promised them a promise, like a date for, for the sex date. And then she said, give me the two words you say, so you can go to heaven. And then they told her the, the word. And when she went up to heaven, Allah, he made her a star. It's called Venus. Is that Sahih or Da'if? Sahih. I will give you the link. You can open it yourself and you can read yourself. You can go where it says here, like here it says uh, uh, 511, the line after it, 511, down neath. Uh, let us go to Google, hold on. Google, uh, Prophet Google. I, I could not, maybe you can find it in English, this is the same website, I'm not sure. Because sometimes they translate the same website, they translate their, uh, you need to translate to English. Okay. Let us see where is 511 to follow. Here we go. This is 511. So the line is going to be underneath of it. Okay, it says. Uh, Al-Hakam narrated and corrected. It's a correct. Do you see it says corrected? Corrected means it's authentic. Sahahahu. It's a sahih. The word sahih means correct. And corrected. And this is the narration. And the funny, the Muslim, they say to you, there's no sanad, which means there's no reference or who is who was the one who mentioned the proof of that. And then you will see that Allah, he sent those two angels and he gave them uh, he gave them the, the temptation, they got horny, and he sent the women, the most beautiful women, to them, and they wanted to have boom boom with her. And the women, she was very picky. She said, you have to do a few things before you can do boom boom. And you have to tell me, if you want to go boom boom with me, you have to tell me the password to go to heaven. So then they gave her the password, and she went up to heaven. And when she went up to heaven, Allah, he received a fax that there is somebody passing by so fast. So Allah, he cursed her and he made her a star. And that star is called Venus. And as you see, all those references mention the same story. All of them. So the women, she wanna, the, the angels want to sleep with her and they decide to do anything she wants. Actually, I have a link in English. Let me find it for you. But I will give you this link here first to, for the reference in Arabic so you can see that Muslims agree that this is Sahih Hadith because they might say to you, oh, this is the Shia. 
they might say to you, oh, the Shia is the one who teach that, not us. This is the story of Ahrut and Marut. And you will see that this is a real story, according to Muslims. And really, the woman, her name is Venus, the goddess of sex. And you will see all the account stories regarding this story, which mean all the stories the Muslims they have about it. This star Venus was a very beautiful woman. She had gone to one of those two angels for obtaining some kind of decision. At the very sight of her, the angel fell of love for sure. I mean, she is Venus. Come on, you know, this is not Nancy but Lucy. Come on. So he fell in love with her. And he told her the truth is with, like he told her, like, you know, the, the information, you know, the secrets, you know, he starts sharing secrets. It's what they, like a spy you see in James Bond movie, you know, James Bond, like they send him a woman, she is so beautiful. James Bond, he kiss all women, and all women, they go in love with him right away. But in this case here, James Bond is Venus. Just take a note. And you will see here the old stories. I mean, all of them is about the angels doing commit sin, they want to fornicate, etc. So when the Muslims they say the angels don't for, don't commit sin, that is stupid because the Quran confirmed it. And Allah, he punished them actually in the Quran. He ordered them to bow down to Adam. The Muslims they say, well, no, no. Allah, he ordered Adam, uh, the, the, the angels to bow down to Adam for the sake of respect. How you respect someone, he's a sinner. Why the angels who don't commit sin will bow down to someone who commits sin? So the bowing down, in fact, it was a penalty. After they fail to recite the names, and they says they give up, they says, we do not know, it's you. And then Allah, he said to them, to the angels, bow down to Adam. So it was a penalty. And you will notice here, that according to Islam, Satan, he refused to bow down to Adam. That means Satan is more decent than the angels. Because why an angel will bow down to a man? And if the angels never commit sin as the Abdul they claim, then why they are bowing down to someone who commits sin? Actually, the verse in front of us, the same chapter speaking about Adam committing sin. So Allah, he says to Adam, go on your wife and do it in the heaven. Wonderful. Don't eat from this tree. Wonderful. Muhammad copying the Jews. And then here you say, Shaitan, he made them slip their force. So they commit sin. But this is exactly what the angel, they say that this, those guys, they are going to commit sin. And you will see that the, the, the Muslim, they claim that Allah, when he sent Adam down to earth, he did not send them down as a penalty. They claim that Allah he did not send angels, down, Adam and Eve, down as a penalty. This is only in Christianity. But the Muslim here, they are lying about their religion too, showing their ignorance, because how you say such a thing? Let me see if I can't find you. Here we go. Look at this guy. Why Allah, he sent the angels down? So when we talk about Adam alayhi salam, they also say we believe in Adam and Eve and all of that, right? There are some fundamental differences though. We don't believe Adam was sent to the earth as a punishment. The Quran mentions the story of Adam alayhi salam seven times. In the sequence of the Quran, this is the first time. Obviously, it's a Madani surah, so this is not the first time. So you see here how they, you know, the Muslims did not even read their books. And they lie about their books. If it was not a punishment, why the verse says that when the shaitan, he slipped them, not before. You see, Allah, he told them, go and dwell in your garden. So the garden of Adam and Eve in Islam is different from the garden of Adam and Eve in, in Christianity. Muhammad is a fraud, is a stupid. 
The garden of Adam and Eve in Christianity, it's down in earth. It is in the ground. It's a garden. It's not really a heaven. Like it's in the sky, something in the sky. It's a garden in the earth. So, but here we see that when Shaitan, he made them slip. Then, read carefully. Then the Shaitan made them slip. They're from the paradise. I mean, look at this. The guy, he just said in Islam, Andrew and Eve did not, uh, were not cut out because of sin. So what is this? And get them out from that in which they were. We said, get down. So Allah, he said, get down. See here the word. Actually, I remember once there was a big shake from Lebanon. He's a potato. I made cheese kebab of him and the coward after we posted the debate in YouTube. He flagged it. He sent like a thousand people because people, they were laughing at him for the stupidity he have. Because he claimed that in Islam, the, the garden of Adam and Eve is not in heaven. It is in earth like the Bible. I told him, Abdul, your beard is long. You have a long, he's a terrorist. You know, this guy is a real terrorist. He's from the city of Tripoli in, in Lebanon. So the coward, when his followers, they noticed how bad the mistake and how bad the... the that the debate was, they went to YouTube and they flagged that this is a violation for uh, uh, personal rights. Privacy, sorry, privacy. I mean, it's a public debate in the internet and privacy. That's what YouTube told me. So get down. They get down where? Why? Get down because they slip. So they say to you, no, not because we just heard the guy saying that it's not because of sin they were kicked out. So get down from it, and then not only that, he brought curse on them, all with enmity between yourself. So it was a penalty, a lie. This is why we say never, 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 never learn Islam from Muslims. And here you see the stupidity again. Then Adam, he start asking Allah for forgiveness. And this is the story, if you remember, when Adam, he said to Allah, Forgive me for the sake of Muhammad. Allah said to Adam, how in the world do you know about Muhammad when I created him not yet? Adam, he said to him, when you created me, I left up my head and I found the name of Muhammad written in your chair. And I said to myself, there's no way Allah will rejoin the name of a man beside his name is unless it is the most beloved person to him. So Allah forgive Adam, but still the penalty is there. Get down. And you will notice that get down as a penalty, it is coming twice. Verse number 36, it's chapter number two. Adam prayed for Allah, asking for forgiveness in the name of Muhammad. Allah forgive him. Still, get down. So the paradise was not. in earth in Islam, and paradise was a reward, and earth was not a reward. Because shaitan, he slipped them, and now go down. Until guidance come to you, so that means that Adam is out of guidance. And that to prove that Adam cannot be a prophet, this is stupid from the Muslim to say that he is a prophet. If, well, if, if he's a prophet, why is he waiting for guidance? Who is the one bring guidance? And right away you will see that the guidance is the children of Israel. If you remember in the hadith, Moses he argue with Adam. I'm just trying to find the Hadith. And this is Al-Bukhari. Adam, he said to Moses, 
So Musa says to Adam, uh, he argued with him, and here you ask yourself how in the world Adam and Musa they are meeting, because according to Islam, nobody is alive except Jesus. All the prophets are dead. The Quran says, Qad khalat min qabluh, qabluh rusulu. All the messengers before him, they died. So Musa and Adam, they argue, and Musa says to Adam, because of you, we are out of heaven. So why? Because of you. Because of your sin. The word actually sin is there in front of you. Because of your sin. Do you see it? Because of your sin. So when the Muslims, they say, this is why I call those, those people in YouTube, they are not teachers. Really. They claim to be sheikhs, but they are potatoes. They don't even know their books. You are, we are out of paradise because of your sin. Adam said to him, and here you see the stupidity, are you going to blame me for a fate ordained for me before my creation? So the sin of Adam was ordained. It was a plan of Allah. And this is why the Abdul, he's saying, it's not the penalty, well, it's a, but because of his sin, but the sin of Adam was a fraud, which means Allah, he made Adam commit a sin, as an excuse to kick him out of heaven. And this is proof again that Muhammad can't be prophet and his God can't be God. He tricked Adam. He made Adam commit sin in order to give himself excuse to kick him out of heaven. It's fate. It was a trap. It was not a free will. So he said to him, do you, do you blame me? As you see, this is all Sahih al-Bukhari. Do you blame me for a fate written before my creation? In different hadith in Sahih Bukhari, it says 40 years before my creation. So did Adam commit sin? Yes. Did Allah kick him out from heaven because of sin? Yes. But the sin was a fate. And this is why Islam again is a fraud. Because what kind of God is God? He made me commit sin and then he punished me for my sin. What a stupid God. And this is why if you go in the Quran, you will see the Quran saying that shaitan himself is a victim of Allah. So the shaitan, he says, when you deceive me, aghwaitani, aghwaitani mean you deceive me. Chapter 7, verse number 16. Because you deceive me, the Muslim, he translated as sin, astray, astray, and it's close. But it's, it's a fabrication of translation. But send me astray. Who is the one who sent shaitan astray? Allah. Because you deceive me, I'm going to deceive them. I will sit for them in every corner. And you will see here, this is the same story about Adam and Eve. This is how stupid the Quran is, by the way, because you find the story all over. This is exactly the same story. And there's a mistake for sure here, because Allah, he ordered the angels to bow down. He got upset from Iblis, but Iblis is a genie in Islam, is not an angel. Satan in Christianity is a fallen angel, in Islam is not. He's a genie. So as you see, the angels are the one who accuse Adam to do mischievement. Why Allah is ordering the angels to bow down, it was a penalty. And why Allah is upset from shaitan for not bowing down when he is the one who says to the angels bow down. You say all boys sit down except the girl. And then you get upset from the girl. And remember here, this is not about gender. Satan is a totally different creature. Satan, according to Islam, is created from fire, from gas. And angels are created from light. So they are totally different in everything. So Allah, he said to the angels, bow down, bow down. But, but he is not an angel, why he would bow down anyway? And then Allah, he says to him, what, why you did not bow down? He said, well, I am better than Adam. You created me from fire, he created him from clay. But the, the, if, if, if Shaitan is smart, he should say, well, I, you said angels, you idiot. I'm not an angel. 
So the whole story is stupid. And Shaitan himself is a victim of Allah, as you see. And then Allah, the funny here, that Allah, he ordered Shaitan to get out of paradise before he misled Adam and Eve. This is the chapter 7, verse number 18. Read with me carefully. This is when Allah, he, when, uh, when, uh, when, uh, when Shaitan refused to bow down to Adam, Allah, he said to him, get out. Read carefully. Get out from this, between two bracket paradise, with disgrace, etc. Expelled. Okay. And then he told Adam and Eve, you sit in the paradise. You and your wife go. And then suddenly we find that Shaitan is still there. Shaitan, he go to the garden and he misled Adam and Eve. But you kicked him out. You remember when the Muslim, they say, if Allah wants something to happen, he say, be, is going to be. Allah, he said to Shaitan, get out. How come Shaitan was not out? <laughs> so, you know, when we say Islam is just a silly, stupid religion, you know, all what you need just to do, just connect the information together and you will see how it's stupid. And the funny is, you need to learn how to use the Muslim logic. As an example, if you ask the Muslim here, when Allah, he ordered Shaitan to get out, would Allah get him out immediately or is going to take like some processing, like paper, signatures from here, signature from there? He would say, no, right away, brother. Allah, if he wants something to say, he say, be, it's going to be. Okay. Then how shaitan get back again? Do you remember when Muhammad, he went to heaven and there is seven doors and there is guards and they asked the angel Jibreel, who is with you? Uh, what are, even Jibreel himself, he need to permission to get in. So how shaitan, Allah, he ordered him, he said to him, get out. You know, you assume that God, when he say get out, shaitan will be out in a second. That's it, get out. Get down, actually. And then we find shaitan is coming back. Look like shaitan is a good hacker. He was able to go through the, some ports in the computer of Allah. So, and Adam, and now after he kicked him out, he, he tell Adam to go to heaven and enjoy it. And then shaitan, he slept them out. But the guy is out already. And then you will see here, and then he misled them with deception. And then we said to them, get down, both of you. But they strip it, you just told them already. Read. He told them again, get down. You, you said, get down. Get out. So my friend, when the Muslim, they say that the, when the angels, they were questioning the, the, the decision of Allah, this was not a real question that is a stupid. Because if it's not really a question, then why Allah is making a quiz test? And that means that Allah, he did not even know the difference between real question and not real question because he continued, he took it seriously and he wanted to prove to them that he knew what they know not. In the same time, in the top of that, if Allah, he knew the truth that they are liars and he said to them, tell me the truth if you are, if you are truthful, uh, that is really funny. If Allah, he knew the answer of the angels, that angel would say, Oh Allah, it's you who knows everything. We do not know. So what is this about? And why the angels, they are questioning decision. Isn't this is a sin? And why the angels are assuming that Adam and Eve, they will do mischievement. Isn't it a sin to accuse somebody before he commits sin to do sin? Because this will be gossip. What is gossip? Gossip is to say lies about somebody, something not true. And Allah, he confirmed that it's not true by saying, if you are truthful. So when the Muslim, they try to escape it, we have all the reference. We have the story of uh, 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 Harut and Marut. We have from the book of the Sunni. We have from the book of the Shia. We have it from the Quran. And all of it is leading us that Allah, he got the wrong angels. And when the Quran says, if you are truthful, that's mean they aren't truthful. If Allah don't mean what he say, that they are truthful or not, that's mean the Quran is stupid. Because if they are truthful, and then Allah, he says to them, if you are truthful, that's mean the Quran is stupid. Are they truthful or not? If they are truthful, and Allah making a challenge saying to them, if you are truthful, in this translation, he says, if you are right, so they are wrong. You see how the Quran changed, just changing the translator? There's a huge difference between right and truthful.
Sadiqeen is about truthful. Tell me the names if you are truthful. So Allah making false challenge name. And they are making false accusation. But false accusation is a sin by itself. If this is not what he will do, that is a lie. And lie is a sin. And angels should not lie. So, how easy to prove that Allah got the wrong angels? Obviously, none of them is an angel. Allah is not God. Muhammad is the prophet. And Islam is just a collection of fairy tale stories.